G'day and welcome to the guide video for the Makerverse SuperCap RTC on the Raspberry Pi. In this video, we're going to learn how to configure the Raspberry Pi to use the SuperCap RTC as its primary clock so that in the event of a reboot or a power failure, it doesn't lose track of time. Let's get started. SuperCap RTC is an I2C device, so we're going to need to make four connections, two for power and two for the I2C bus. Holding the RTC in this orientation, let's start with the ground connection. You can see the ground pin on the back of the RTC labeled, and we're going to use the fifth pin in from this corner on the Raspberry Pi. The next three connections are actually quite straightforward because the Raspberry Pi has VCC, serial data, and serial clock in the same order as the RTC pinout. With the RTC connected to the Raspberry Pi, it's time to boot up the Raspberry Pi and open up a web browser and navigate to the guide for the rest of this installation. On the Raspberry Pi, the bulk of this tutorial is going to be done in the command line. Basically, there isn't really an easy GUI tool to do a lot of these steps. As a bonus, it's very easy to use this guide through SSH. On the Raspberry Pi, we're going to open up a terminal with Control Alt T. And the first thing we're going to do is configure the I2C interface. The steps for enabling the I2C interface are towards the top of the guide. We'll scroll down and find the Raspberry Pi I2C configuration and run through the steps. First thing is to open up the Raspberry Pi configuration utility and then scroll down to interface options, scroll down to I2C, press yes to enable the I2C bus and press OK to confirm the changes. Then we're going to scroll down and press finish to exit this utility. Scrolling down in the guide, you'll find the next step is to install some software. Running this command at step 7 is going to install some I2C utilities so we can use the command line to talk to the I2C devices. Copy that one into a terminal and run it. When that's done, the last thing to do here is to reboot to make sure that any changes we've made have been configured properly. With the Raspberry Pi rebooted and the guide back open, we're going to run a command to make sure that the Raspberry Pi can actually talk to the RTC. Scrolling through the guide, you'll see this command i2cdetect-y1. We'll run that in the terminal and hopefully you'll get this output. The 52 in this location indicates that address 52 in hexadecimal can actually talk to a device and that is the RTC module. The next step is to configure the RTC chip itself so that it falls over to the capacitor as a battery backup and so that it charges the capacitor while it's switched on. To do that, we'll find the section in the guide RV3028 capacitor configuration and copy these three commands into a terminal and press enter to run them all. Next, we can confirm that this configuration was done correctly by finding the next command to read back one of the registers from the RTC and making sure that the output is 0x3c. This means we're all good to go. The next step is to enable the RV3028 driver in the Linux kernel, so the driver loads on boot. We do that by scrolling down in the guide to enabling the RV3028 driver. Running this first command here, we'll just add the correct line to the Raspberry Pi's config.txt file to load the RV3028 driver. We'll run that command and then we'll do a reboot and make sure that it's been loaded. With the Raspberry Pi rebooted and the guide back open, we can check out the guide and run this command here to make sure that the driver has loaded. If the driver has loaded, the 52 is being replaced with UU. This just means that I2C detect hasn't tried to probe that address because a kernel driver is currently using it. Scrolling down in the guide to the next step, and it's the Raspberry Pi clock configuration. The first thing we need to do here is remove the existing fake hardware clock driver. We do that by copying these three commands into the terminal and letting them run. Next, we're going to run a command that edits a script so that it reads from the RTC instead of the old fake hardware clock driver. To do this, we run this fairly cryptic looking command. And what that's done is commented out a whole stack of lines in a configuration file and replaced them with a command that reads from the RTC to set the system clock. Now that all that configuration has been done, we're going to reboot again. Now that we've done yet another reboot, we can check the system log to make sure that the RV3028 is being used as a time source. To do that, we'll run the dmessage command and just search for the string RV3028. 
If you get the output that has been registered as RTC zero, that means we're all good. Next, I'm gonna disable the network time service so that we can simulate setting the time in an environment where you don't have internet access. We'll run these two commands here under the heading disabling automated network time updates. And that will allow us to now manually set the time without the network time service, changing it back almost instantly. Scrolling back up a little bit to where it says setting the time, we've got this command here, which sets the time manually. Naturally, you will need to edit the time in this string at the end to whatever your current time is. After running that, we can run the next command. This one writes the current system time to the hardware RTC. And then in order to do a debug to make sure it's actually written to the RTC correctly, we can run this command here. And you can see that the time in the RTC is currently a few seconds after the time that we manually set earlier. We hope this has given you some ideas for your own offline time-based projects. If you make something cool or just have a question about this guide, leave a comment on the article for this video.